why I chose to teach for America. When I first decided to teach for America, a friend's father asked me, why teaching? Why not corporate America? This seemingly easy question caused me to think back to my childhood. I grew up in the suburbs of Silver Spring, Maryland. This was my life, a seemingly easy existence. I went to a great school, I came home, I did my homework, I played, I went to sleep, and I got up, and I did it all over again. But when I drove to Washington, D.C. with my father, this is what I often saw, just a few kilometers away from where I lived. This was another child's life, and it disturbed me. Violence and police were a regular occurrence. At that point, I could not articulate what was wrong, but I knew that something was wrong. I wondered why there were always police outside and why I never saw children playing. As I got older and entered university, I realized that the difference was just a zip code. Five random numbers determined so much. These five random numbers identified where a child lived. But unfortunately, it also played a major role in the child's life, in their life's trajectory. There was no difference other than a zip code from where they lived and me. There was no difference between them and I. So during my final year at university, I contemplated what to do after graduation. It was then that I met a woman named Shante, who told me about this movement called Teach for America. She told me that there were thousands of recent graduates, just like me, that were teaching in low-income communities across America. She told me that there were thousands of young people just like me that believed that every student could learn and succeed when given the opportunity. And she told me about the thousands of students' lives that were forever changed by a Teach for America teacher. So, needless to say, I made the decision to teach for America. So let's fast forward. Now I've graduated from Spelman College, and I'm teaching middle school English in Washington, D.C. I am teaching in the same communities that my father and I drove through when I was a child. Those two years were the hardest two years of my life. I was challenged beyond belief, both intellectually and emotionally. Most of my students read grossly below grade level. I had 13 and 14-year-olds that read on a seven-year-old's level. My students were good kids, but they were neglected by our educational system, not to mention most of them lived in very challenging situations. I would spend hours creating lessons, revising lessons, creating behavior plans, revising behavior plans, crying, laughing, crying again. It was a whirlwind of emotions. I had 35 students and not enough deaths, and yet none of that mattered. The only thing that mattered was me being the best teacher that I could be, because my students, they deserved a fighting chance. And so I cried, I got over it, and I kept working harder and harder for my students for these kids. These were my actual students. And if their lives were going to change, I had to do my part. On one of these incredibly challenging days, I received this exact letter from one of my students. I will read it for you now. Dear Ms. Gibson, I sat on my bed and I thought I had to thank you for pushing me to the point where I miracle to this day want to learn and not play. Miss Gibson, it's kind of hard because I've been through a lot and you can't tell. When I was two years old, I was left on the top of some random steps. My mother left me and if it wasn't for my uncle or my father, I would be dead or following someone else. 
That's why I love you. And thank you for caring about even me, doing good in school and getting my grades up. Miss Gibson, I cry every night. Miss Gibson, I cry every night, and I don't show it. I cry because now to this day, I'm going through it still. I tell my friends I love them for one reason, because if something happens to them, I will go crazy. Why? Because now to this day, I cry when I see homeless people on the street. And I hate when babies are out in the cold and they don't have a warm place to live. That's why when I grow up, I will never leave my child out like I was. My child will have everything I couldn't have. So I'm telling you this because I really love you. And I thank you for helping me to get to where I want to be. Because also, what I thought was a joke, I'm now taking it seriously. Your student, Miracle. P.S. I want a big hug. When I read this letter, I cried. I cried because of all the things my student was going through. I cried because every night she cries. But I cried out of joy. I cried because she finally understands how important education is. And I cried because for once, I knew that I made the right decision when I chose to teach for America. This was just Miracle's story. I had 150 miracles. I had one student named Dion who entered my classroom, the lowest of all of my students. He was one of the oldest at 15 and read on a seven-year-old's level. Every time a lesson I taught seemed successful, it was clear that Dion still didn't understand. Knowing that 90 minutes a day was just not enough to help him, I know I needed to work with him after school. Day after day, Dion and I read books, learned new words, and began writing poetry. By the end of the year, he had grown one year in reading. And equally as important, he began to realize that he too was capable of succeeding academically. Dion and Miracle are strong kids. They, along with their classmates, have overcome so much and are determined to be great. They taught me perseverance, they taught me determination, and they taught me a lot of patience. I have no clue what's next for me, but I know I'm a smarter, stronger, more organized and determined person because of teaching. Following my time in the classroom, I moved to New York to recruit teachers. Dion, Miracle, and my 148 students taught me how important great teachers are, and I wanted to do my part to find them. My entire outlook on life has changed since Teaching for America. If I had to do it again, I would time and time again. It was an amazing year, two years. I met the smartest, most dedicated, and amazing people. I helped to change a child's life. I helped to give a child an opportunity, and in the process, they completely changed mine. When we enter Teach for America, they show us these gross statistics. Just 8% of kids from low-income communities will graduate from college by the age of 24. If we want the world to change, we have to invest in education. The only proven way to get a family out of poverty is through an education. If we want to advance technology and medicine, if we want the next best engineers, architects, lawyers, we must invest in education. Rather than just working on the farms, if we want our kids to own the farms that they till, we must invest in education. We cannot complain about poverty and the problems in society and not do anything about education. So thank you. And I hope you consider helping to change your nation's future by choosing to teach for Thailand. Kapkun ka.